If I told you there was a mountain made of crystals in the middle of the Arizona desert, would you believe me? Well, today we are heading to what locals call Glitter Mountain. And trust me, it lives up to its name. Welcome to the rock record. Let's talk rocks. Alrighty, welcome to Glitter Mountain. Today we are going to explore what the heck are we looking at, how did it form, and how to be responsible rock hounds while visiting here. Tucked away in the Arizona desert, just south of the Utah border, these glittering mounds have been drawing mineral enthusiasts for years. But there's more to this site than just pretty crystals. All right, so here at Glitter Mountain, we're looking at a mineral called selenite or selenite. I say selenite because it was actually named after the goddess of the moon, Selene. So selenite here, but I have heard people call it selenite. And they're so clear that you can actually see light pass through them. It's a really cool property. I just love it because they have this moon-like glow and ethereal feel about them. So very appropriately named, I'd say, as far as minerals go. But of course, here's what I love about rocks and minerals and geology. These aren't just beautiful crystals. They actually tell a story of a really cool ancient past. To understand how these crystals formed, we need to travel back in time about 250 million years. Okay, according to the BLM, the glitter mine deposit was formed when selenite was deposited as part of the Moen Kopi formation during the early Triassic about 250 million years ago. So what does that mean? That means back then this whole area was covered by salt water. As the ancient sea here evaporated, it left behind more than just dried land. It created the perfect conditions for these incredible crystals to form. Think of it kind of like making a rock candy. As the water evaporates, crystals slowly grow, creating these incredible transparent formations. But what's really interesting is how the environment affected these crystals during their formation. Some are super clear, which means they were kind of near fine sand. Others are a bit more of a tan color. The tan reddish color comes from iron being present during the formation of the crystals. You can see there's a lot of red rocks around here. So selenite is actually a form of gypsum. The chemistry nerds out there might really like this one. They have the same chemical formula, but selenite forms these clear, beautiful crystals under certain conditions. How cool is that? Something to keep in mind and what might surprise most people is these crystals kind of look like panes of glass, but they're incredibly soft. They come in about a two on the most hardness scale, same as gypsum. You can actually scratch them with your fingernail. Your fingernail is harder on the most hardness scale than selenite. And it's something you want to keep in mind while you're rock hounding out here. You want to make sure that you transport them and be very cautious when picking them up. So before you start collecting, here's what you need to know. Places like Glitter Mountain are pretty special. It's not every day that you can just pull off to the side of the road and find piles of beautiful crystals that you can take home. But it's important to remember that this place is only here and you're only allowed to collect at it because of the kindness of the owners of the property. So it's really important to respect their rules and the environment around you. First off, Google Maps will lead you right to the site, and you can find this on my Cool Geology free Google Maps layer. The dirt road is manageable for most vehicles, but I could see how it could be a little bit sketchy after maybe a rainstorm, so be sure to keep that in mind. Bring plenty of water. There's no shade out here. Morning visits are great to beat the heat or evening for those beautiful sunsets. And you definitely want to bring something to wrap your crystals in for the drive home. Remember, selenite is really soft and easily scratched, so you want to make sure you protect those. There's no fee to stop by for a visit, but you do need to pay for what you collect via PayPal or Venmo. There are instructions on the sign at the site. All right, it is free to just come here and check it out. And like I said, there's stuff all over already, which is so cool. Um, but if you do take stuff, then you should pay. So here's where it talks about how to pay for the rocks. So um, the Venmo right here, easy QR codes to scan. And then here's kind of like the pricing. <laughs> I'm not going to grab a bucket, but they do have like $2 per pound, which is great. Um, so yeah, big old Venmo here. Let's see, I have, I don't know, I don't even think I have a pound. But we're going to say $5, I think. We're just gonna do that. This is well worth a five dollar adventure. And of course, remember to stay away from any mining equipment, pay for what you collect, be respectful of the site, 
pack out what you pack in and don't enter restricted areas. Whether you're a serious mineral collector or just a beginner like me, or even just someone who thinks crystals are really cool, cause who doesn't think this is cool? There is something magical about being able to come out and pick up your own specimens. And understanding how they formed makes it even more incredible. Even though Glitter Mountain is located in Arizona, this was filmed during our Utah adventure, so be sure to check out the full vlog on that. I also have some other TLDR episodes where we explore more stories written in stone. Alrighty, we are all paid up. It is getting dark, so I think it's time to load up the car and head on to the next adventure. And we're doing things a little bit opposite this year. We're actually uploading the shorter videos and then the full vlogs. So stay tuned, be sure to like, subscribe, and let me know where should I go rock hunting next? This is something I am hoping to get into more this year. I know you all love it. As a geologist, I have just never been a good rock hound. I've always loved telling the stories written in stone, but I've never been really good at like rock hounding, like finding rocks to take home, even though I do have a lot of rocks at home. So let me know where should we go rock hound next? What should we be looking for? What do you want to see? Everything. So see you on the next one. Until next time, keep exploring the stories written in the stone around you.